Good afternoon and welcome to my seminar. It's called Making E-Commerce Pay. This afternoon I'm going to talk to you about what makes a successful e-commerce website in my opinion. I'm going to suggest a few things that you can do to increase your turnover as well as what you can do to minimize costs because as we all know increased turnover plus reduced costs equals more profit. So who am I? Um, my name is Andrew Firth. I own a web design and development company based in Leeds and London. Uh, we specialize in e-commerce. So that's a little bit about me. Can you please put your hands in the air if you own an e-commerce website? Okay, keep your hands in the air if that e-commerce website earns you enough money. Okay. And that's the same with most e-commerce websites. There's so many e-commerce websites out there that don't actually deliver for their owners. One of the reasons for this is there is huge competition in the marketplace. It doesn't matter what sector you're in, when you're marketing online, you will face large amounts of competition. And there are big businesses out there that pile into marketplaces with huge amounts of investment. It seems like people just set up and sell what you sell. Big businesses get into the market with huge marketing budgets and almost swamp the competition. But it's not just that. Customers are becoming ever more demanding. It seems that customers are always looking for a discount. It seems that customers, they want their goods like yesterday. Customers are more empowered thanks to social media and they put a lot of pressure on e-commerce website owners to deliver beyond reasonable expectations sometimes. And marketing's become less effective. Some of the old techniques that used to work really well, such as buying a load of links back into a website or email marketing, they've become less and less effective. But there are more opportunities out there, such as social marketing, where your next customer can be found by your current customer. But what do I know? Well, five years ago, my business partner and I set up an internet retail business. We sell novelty goods, gifts and gadgets. We operate more than 40 websites. We have a 5,000 square foot warehouse in Leeds. And what it is for our center clients is we really are a case study in action. Everything we promise our clients we can do for them, we're doing it within our own websites. It is our unique selling point. So, what makes a successful e-commerce website? Visibility. Quite simply, if your website cannot be found, then it will not sell. And I'm not just talking about visibility within the search engines. I mean visibility on all of the available platforms, social, video. You need to make sure that your website can be found so it's going to convert. It's, it's quite simple. You need to have ease of use. There's a great book called Don't Make Me Think by a guy called Steve Krug. It's about 12 years old, but it's still very, very valid. And it teaches us about how people expect to find websites. It's called Don't Make Me Think. And people expect to find certain things in certain places. And if you try and get too crafty with your website design, then people will be, chances are they'll be put off because they need instant gratification, as you may well know when you're surfing the web yourselves. Or I would also recommend video. Video is now used more by customers to find out more about you than ever. And YouTube, um, I think it was last week or the week before, YouTube actually overtook Google. Of course, it's owned by Google, but it overtook Google as being searched on more every day than, than traditional Google, because people would rather watch what you're doing to find out about you than read pages and pages of information. So even if you have an e-commerce site, sometimes it can be quite difficult to find ways to produce a video. But if there's a way to produce a video about your business, it can replace certain aspects. And of course, by having your video on YouTube, you can stream that onto your website, which will also improve loading speeds. Um, loading speeds is absolutely critical, not just for customer satisfaction in terms of they're not having to wait for information to load up, but also Google now measures a website's loading speed and it will penalize a website within the search engine if it doesn't load quick enough. There's a great website out there called webpagetest.org and you can actually independently test the speed of your website because it will always run much quicker in your offices because it's going to be cached on your machines. So you can really see how quick your website performs. 
and administration. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit later about back office systems and things like that, but administration here, I'm, I'm more talking about customer services and people expect to receive their goods when you tell them they're going to receive them. So provide the right content to your customers through the e-commerce website and you, you're going to make yourself shine above so many e-commerce websites out there that let their customers down all the time and with the feedback mechanisms that are out there at the moment it's so much easier for somebody to make a complaint about a website that's not doing well than the likelihood of them actually paying you a compliment and all of this comes around to customer loyalty I've learned in business that Spending money on your existing clients is by far the best use of your marketing budget than trying to source new clients. If you can target your existing clients in ways to help them engage with you more, they're more likely to feel loyal to you and more likely to purchase from you. If you've got the visibility, you've got the ease of use and you're handling that client relationship effectively, then you're going to get loyalty from them. And that is so much more of a, a, a better use of your marketing pounds. So, what can you do to increase turnover? Customer profiling. As I've just mentioned, if you get to know your customers, not just what they bought, but how they chose to engage with you, and you use that method to engage back with them, you're speaking the same language. Many websites now have a client account access system so that they can give maybe loyalty or bonus points if somebody is uh, logging into their website. But you can use that to gain more information from your clients. Find out when their birthdays are. Set up an automated email to communicate with them. And maintain contact. And I don't mean bombarding them with information all of the time. Communicate with them in the way that they communicated with you in the first place. And that all comes down to using your analytics really wisely to understand how businesses are engaging with you. And generate feedback. There's a great website called Ecomi, which is spelled E-K-O-M-I, and it's a .co.uk. And that is a way to generate feedback. I don't know if anybody's seen when they're searching on Google, you have the, the feedback stars at the side. Well, those feedback stars can be gained in retrospect. People would rather do business with a company that's come by way of a recommendation these days than an advert. And of course, a website on its own is just an advert. But if somebody is giving you feedback or somebody is recommending your website through the social channels, then your next customer is more likely to purchase from you. By generating feedback, you're able to indicate the popularity of your store compared to your competitors. And Ecomi enable you to go back to your last 3,000 customers and get them to rate the service. So you can give yourselves a really quick start. And also if you use eBay shops, you're now able to stream your eBay feedback into this, which will help you to gain, hit the ground running, if you like. We recommend ethical SEO practices. SEO, it's had a bit of a bad name in the past um, for black hat techniques and a lot of that has been through outsourcing link building, buying large volumes of links using link farms and they can actually now penalise websites. There's been some Google updates, the Panda update, which has meant that websites need to have um, an ethical SEO policy which shows businesses linking and other websites linking to your website from multiple sources, from multiple different postings. And it's important that Business owners understand that there's a lot that they can do as far as SEO is concerned. You don't have to outsource so much if you can write a blog. And if you can then use that blog through the social networks, you can tweet the blog. The blog can maybe go onto a LinkedIn page if you use LinkedIn. And you can get from a very small amount of, of effort in terms of the marketing, but the effort will come in terms of actually writing the thing in the first place, which is good information for your business. If you post it onto your blog, you can then tweet it, for example, and you can spread it very, very quickly. Now, your blog needs to be written in a way where you've got internal links going back into your site with those links being relevant to the terms that you're trying to rank for. So um, you would use terms that are going to generate what I would like to call uh, the long tail effect. Now, the long tail effect is something, it's a term that's been banded around, but it basically means that um, if you have phrases, it's, it's more three and four word phrases that are less competitive because they're, hard, they're easier to rank for, but they're gonna yield less traffic. But the traffic that they yield is very, very specific. 
So it's actually easier to rank for three and four word phrases that are relevant to what you do and the products that you're offering and the people that will find you will find you more easily because there are less people marketing for those terms. And even though you're not going to be hit with loads and loads of traffic, you've got exactly what that person is looking for. And you can use your blog to generate this uh, long tail effect more easily as Google begins to rank news much more readily than it ranks uh, just general content on pages. And of course, competitive analysis. Businesses who are not doing competitive analysis online should be because there's so much information available from your competitors. It's so easy to follow, and believe me, your competitors will be following you. It's so easy to follow what they're doing, you know, follow them on the social networks, sign up to their newsletters and see exactly what they're doing. And sometimes it's easier to do what other people are doing better than it is to try and do something new. And certainly following your competitors gives you a much easier way of doing that. And of course, website analytics. Website analytics should be in place on every single website. Google Analytics is free of charge. There are some more uh, involved analytics packages out there. One that I recommend that's also free is something called Stat Counter. Stat Counter enables you to look at a really micro view of visitors on your website, so you can actually see how they found you, where they went through your website, and of course where they left, which is very important. Google Analytics gives you a much more macro view. So particularly when you're starting out, using something like Stat Counter helps you to understand what's really working for an individual, and then you can try and use that more as you're in your ongoing development in terms of trying to uh, understand what the mass one, and, then, and then that information will go through into your Google Analytics where you can get a more macro view of what's going on. And of course, social media. Whatever you think about social media, customers are using social media to engage with businesses. Customers are using social media to tell businesses what they need to be providing them next. Flickr is a social media platform that enables you to put images, so your product images can go onto Flickr and you can create backlinks into your website. Twitter. Twitter enables you to broadcast information, run promotions, but even if you're not interested in communicating with people directly through Twitter, it's essential that you have the Twitter social sharing on your products because your customers will recommend your products to what will hopefully become your next customer. And as I said before, it's all about loyalty, it's all about recommendation going forward as far as e-commerce success is concerned. I would recommend a website called bit.ly, which is B-I-T dot L-Y, which enables you not only to shorten a link, which Twitter does anyway, but you can log into bit.ly and see exactly where that link has gone and how people are accessing your website. So you can try and understand how your communication is working after it's been passed away from your website. Facebook. Now Facebook enables you to have a page. It's important to have a page rather than have a profile set up as your business. But what Facebook enables you to do is put your information there and if your consumers want to come and visit you, then they will do. It's less invasive than Twitter because Twitter you can lose followers by communicating too much. Facebook you can put your information there and if they want to engage with you, they can. People who have a Facebook account are accessing on average two to three times a day. That is how people are now choosing. And Facebook long over took Google has been the most searched on search engine. So it's very, very important, whatever you think about it, that you at least have a profile there. And LinkedIn, I mean, LinkedIn is more of a business to business platform. However, LinkedIn now offer company pages. It's something that they've just introduced a couple of weeks ago. So it's still important to have a company page, even though you may not found, find your target customer through it, you may find opportunities to supply goods, or you may find staff. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a good way to publicize your business. YouTube, I mentioned YouTube before. Now, YouTube acts in two ways. Firstly, it enables you to display videos of your products, but you're able to put backlinks into your videos, which will help your search engine benefit. So on the latter, even if you're not able to create videos of your products because it's not relevant, you can use software now that enables you to create a video made up of stills from your website. By putting a backlink into that, you're helping your website as far as the search engines are concerned. But there's more than YouTube out there. There's something like 150, 150 video social networking sites out there. So once you've got your video, it's quite simple to go and post it all over the place, which will help your search engine uh, optimization. Okay, and all of this comes back to customer loyalty. It's much easier to get more money out of your existing customers than to find new customers. 
So once you've got customer loyalty, that gives you more visibility, which in turn, if you've got the ease of use on your website right, and you've got the administration side of things right, so you're getting packages out on time and you've got really, really happy customers, that then in turn builds more loyalty, and so the cycle goes on. Loyalty, I believe, going forward, is the key to having a successful e-commerce website. It's about making your existing customers talk more about how great you are, it's much more cost effective, and it's the way to really build your client base. But as I said before, it's not just about making more money, it's about being really, really efficient. You need to have an efficient stock management system, and I recommend lean stock management, which enables you to have more products in stock in terms of different SKUs or different product ranges, but lower quantities. In our warehouse, we prefer to segregate our stock into really fast movers, products that are bought regularly, and products that are rarely bought. And I recommend using an EPOS system. If you use an EPOS system that runs on Microsoft Dynamics, it allows you to barcode all of your products, scan products in and out, and then your website can talk to your EPOS system and you can maintain a consistent stock status between your warehouse. So it's particularly important if you're physically retailing as well as retailing online. And of course, efficient dispatch. We recommend using integrated labels for your dispatch notes because your customers basically populate the information on there. There's no manual writing and we've been able to get products out within 45 seconds. So once we've got all of our dispatch notes printed, they can then go into the warehouse. We had, um, I think, 260 odd packages went out in one day by one person quite easily before we increased the number of warehousing staff we got because we got it running so efficiently in the back office. And of course, the more efficient you are in the back office, the more time you can spend doing marketing. And customer ticketing, particularly if you've got more staff and you've got more people communicating with clients, it's really, really important to have a consistent response to your customers. So custom, um, customer ticketing acts like a case system. So if a customer communicates with, with you and then the response goes back, next time you're speaking to them, the, the history of what's been said is there. But what you can also do is have standard responses set up, so if you're always getting asked the same question, you can just press a button and send a standard response, which can be written in a more personal way, so it doesn't seem that way, but again, it makes you more efficient. So, what you can do to increase turnover is build loyalty. What you can do to minimize costs is get really efficient in the back office. And to me, that's how you make e-commerce pay. Thank you very much for listening. I would like to take some questions, but before I do that, if anybody's interested in having a one-to-one -one meeting to discuss an e-commerce site that's already in existence or a project that's coming up, if you'd like to give a business card to one of my colleagues on the way out after the questions, if you just write an M on it, we'll contact you and we'll arrange a meeting in London or maybe somewhere more convenient to you in the, few, in the weeks after the exhibition. So, does anybody have any questions? Customer ticketing, we, we use our own bespoke customer ticketing system, but there are customer ticketing systems out there. I, I don't think we want it offhand, but if you give us a card and you write on their customer ticketing, I'll email you some information. Does anybody else have a question? Okay. I don't get what, what you do like, overall. You obviously run the e-commerce website, but what is your... We, we actually have two businesses. We started as internet retailers. That business is still going today. But a year after that, we set up a sensor to basically resell the technology that we developed for our own websites that was working so well. So now we've got great synergy between the two companies. But our clients like the fact that everything we're promising we can do for them, we do it for ourselves. We're a case study in action. Yeah, as far as social networking is concerned, for every 10 people that you do a good job for, maybe one of those people will say something good about you. If you do a bad job for 10 people, probably all 10 will say something about you. I mean, you've heard what's happened with in terms of the travel industry, as far as certain websites, um, basically um, hurting businesses because they've given customers bad feedback. 
or, or um, hotels have been given bad feedback. But that's maybe just one case in, in many. So that, that's really the downside of it. The bottom line is, is just do a really good job for people. That's all you would expect for yourself. By doing that, you're able to get people shouting about you. And that's a really, really cost-effective way of marketing your business these days. There you go. You're When you're selling products, well, I think it, the thing is about doing things better than other people. It's really important to understand what the big dogs are actually doing. Look at their marketing materials, see what works, see what see what you think about it, and just try and improve on that. But I think, you know, if you can get people, I keep saying it, saying good things about you, then more and more people will want to engage with you. Okay. Does anybody else have a question? Yeah, I mean, when you say templates, I wrote a blog about this recently called um, Shop in a Box Websites Don't Work. And I think the thing is, is that they're really good in terms of getting an online profile. So you're able to drive traffic to what I call a shop in a box through offline marketing. So that's people who you're going to be talking to anyway. But if you want a website to really perform on the search engines, you really need something that's built to be, to be search engine friendly in your market. Templated websites are a one size fits all solution, which, yeah, they're cost effective, but if you don't get a return on that investment, that's exactly what it is a cost, it's not an investment. So, even though a bespoke website will cost more money, if you do things right, you will get that money back and you'll make a profit. Does anybody else have a question? Do you actually own all the rights to your website? So if you wanted to sell it, would you be able to sell everything? Or does somebody else own the content, somebody else own XYZ? You mean if we built a website for somebody, what do they own? Just for example, your own. Just for example, your own. Are you, do you actually own every single aspect of your website? I mean, it depends who, who builds it for you. It depends what it's built with. But yeah, I mean, a customer um, will normally own all of the intellectual property in terms of the front end, so that's the, that's the designs, that's the way that the website interacts with the database, but what it probably in most cases won't own is the content management system. So there are many off-the-shelf co content management systems that you can get, or you can have a bespoke one, but in each case you wouldn't actually own the code relating to that. Does anybody else have a question? Okay, well, thank you very much for listening. Um, thank you. We've, we've got some gifts for everybody. We've got some lollipops on both sides. So if you want to pick one up on your way out, and again, it would be really good to get people's business cards if you want to arrange to have a meeting sometime after the exhibition. Thank you very much.